This is AQA A-Level Chemistry and we are looking at the Year 12 topic, Introduction to Organic Chemistry. This is part one of three videos that will take you through that topic. As always, I'm going to recommend that you try each activity as you go, pausing the video and see how you do. So let's take a start or take a look at the key learning objectives here. And we've got some key terms that we're going to introduce or reintroduce. Empirical, skeletal and structural formula. Now a little bit of background here. When we talk about organic chemistry, we are talking about the chemistry of carbon. And there are millions of carbon containing compounds that fall under the organic umbrella. So let's take a look at some things that we already know. Have a go at these. And we know that carbon is in group four. And even if we don't know, we have access to the periodic table that allows us to find out. We know if it's in group four, that it has four electrons in its outer shell. And we know if it has four electrons in its outer shell and it wants to fill them through bonding, it will need to gain four more. And it does that through sharing electrons and forming covalent bonds. So for every electron that carbon puts in, Another atom needs to put one in, which means that four covalent bonds will be formed. So we're back on the bonding topic still. What does the dot cross diagram look like for methane? Now to answer this, you've got to know the structure of methane is CH4. And we're going to build on that in a big way later within this series of videos. But I've got my carbon surrounded by four hydrogens, my four carbons from the, or my four electrons from carbon's outer shell have now been added in. Hydrogen has one electron in its outer shell, so each hydrogen puts one in, and we can see one, two, three, four covalent bonds. Dot cross structure is done. So we need to look at the different types of formula that we are going to use. And these definitions are really important in terms of being able to reproduce in the paper, but more importantly, being able to understand and apply them. So empirical formula, simplest ratio of atoms of each element in a compound. There's no deviation from that in the way you write it down. Molecular formula, the actual number of atoms of each element in a compound. And then we've got some where you don't necessarily write the definitions down in any great detail, but the structural formula means we can look at it and know how the atoms are arranged. A display formula takes it a step further forward and shows every single bond. And finally, the skeletal formula does away with a huge amount of the detail and a straight line is used to represent CC bonds and hydrogens are ignored. So we only add things that don't fit in those criteria. But let's have a look at what that means in practice. I've got butane here shown in five different ways. Which types of formula are being shown here? Well, let's start with C4H10. That's telling us the actual number of each atom within the molecule four carbons and 10 hydrogens. So that's the molecular formula. But if I want to find the empirical formula, which is the simplest ratio of atoms of each element in the compound, well, four to 10 can be simplified to two to five. So C2H5 is my empirical formula. I then want to find the skeletal formula, the one that simplifies it and shows simply the carbon-carbon bonds as sticks, it ignores the hydrogens and adds anything that doesn't fit those criteria. Well, this is the skeletal formula. I have a carbon, a carbon, a carbon, a carbon. And because nothing else is shown, I can assume that because carbon forms four bonds, this carbon has three H's coming from it, this has two, this has two, and this has three. But then I can go to the display formula that shows every single bond. Well, that's clearly the one on the bottom left hand side. And I can see this carbon has three hydrogens around it. This carbon two, this carbon two, and this carbon three, exactly as I've just described. And that then leaves us with the structural formula. It's not showing all of the bonds, but I can see very clearly that this carbon has three hydrogens around it. It's bonded to a carbon with two hydrogens to a carbon with two hydrogens, to a carbon with three hydrogens. So I've got butane illustrating perfectly 
each of the five different formula types. Okay, let's try some questions on this now. Draw out the skeletal formula of propane. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to break it down a little. Propane looks like this as a display formula. You can see here that there are two CC bonds. So I am going to represent those two CC bonds and they are all I'm going to show. My skeletal formula looks like this. Now let's try ethane. Okay, so I'm going to draw out my display formula. Within there, I have got one CC bond. I don't need to draw my H's. So my skeletal formula for ethane is simply a straight line. Let's now try pentane. Okay, so with my pentane, my display formula shows that I have got one, two, three, four carbon-carbon bonds. So that's all I'm going to draw. So I go one, two, three, four to represent the one, two, three, four bonds. How about methane? What do we think with this one? Well, slightly tricky, bit of a different question. Methane looks like this and it has no CC bonds. So actually, we don't have a skeletal formula to draw. Technically, it would be a dot, but you wouldn't be expected to draw it. It wouldn't be represented in that way. What about hexane? Well, again, I'm going to draw out the display formula. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. That means I've got one, two, three, four, five bonds. So I'm going to draw my one, two, three, four, five sticks to represent the bonds. And just so we can see very clearly, we can number the carbons one, two, three, four, five, six to see what they are representing. And just to finish off this video, part one of this series, let's have a little link back to bonding and try to draw out the 3D structure of methane, which is a much more common way than skeletal. Okay, if you've had a go at that, hopefully you've remembered that the carbon is surrounded by four hydrogens, it's tetrahedral, bond angle 109.5 degrees, and we're representing one bond coming out of the paper and one bond going into the paper. That takes us to the end of this section. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.